Mario Odyssey is the latest entry into the mainline 3D Mario franchise, which includes Mario 64, Sunshine, and the Galaxy titles. In some ways, it's the biggest departure from the classic Mario formula, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but definitely worth talking about. Mario Odyssey is less of a platform game and more of a collectathon with platform elements. To be clear, I enjoy a well made collectathon game and I loved playing through Mario Odyssey. So, this isn't a criticism of the design, but more so an observation I wanted to talk about and reasons some people might be mixed about the game. Ever since Mario's introduction to 3D with Mario 64, Mario began taking the collectathon route. In fact, I'd go as far as to say Mario 64 was the father of collectathon games, with games like Banjo Kazooie taking the elements and improving on the collectathon formula. With the limitations of the N64, bringing Mario into a fully realized 3D environment was a difficult task. Platform games are defined by how tight they control and how important spatial relations are. In a 2D environment, this is incredibly easy to do. As a player, you need to be able to immediately assess where it is you need to go, what routes there are to get there, and be able to accurately control your character to these destinations. If any of these elements are missing, the game becomes frustrating and unplayable. Take into example the now notorious Bubsy titles. As many YouTubers have noted, the games are frustrating because you're too zoomed into Bubsy to tell where you need to go, and you oftentimes can't see the enemies who hurt the character. No matter how well you might be able to control the character, it doesn't matter because you don't know where to go and how it'll affect your character. In a 3D space, this also becomes a challenge, as designers aren't aware of where a player might be looking with the camera. Another immediate issue is depth perception. Within a platform game, you need to know that if you're jumping for a platform, will you reach the platform? Will you overshoot it? In 3D, are you going at the correct angle? As the image you're seeing on the screen is flat, these are much harder to read, as you have no true sense of depth. Unless, that is, you're playing on a 3DS, which actually helps with this issue. In order to solve this, 3D games, such as Crash Bandicoot, added a shadow underneath the character, so anytime you jumped in the air, you could track the character's shadow to know where you actually were in relation to the platforms in the stage. Even so, while you're in the air, it's harder to tell exactly where you are in relation to the platform until you actually see your character's shadow. So, taking all of this into account, taking a challenging 2D platform game with tight controls, such as the original Mario games, into a 3D environment already presented a number of issues. The next issues were the limitations of the hardware and time. A now somewhat well-known historical point to the creation of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is that Miyamoto considered making the game similar to Mario 64, in which Link would be in a castle with paintings that took him to various areas. They weren't sure if they could actually connect the entire world together, especially as the N64 had limited space for how much you could fit in. Every designer of that era, regardless of console, had to fight these limitations for how much they could actually fit into each game. In other words, you might not be able to create as many stages in a Mario game as there typically have been, simply for space reasons. The former 2D Mario games had multiple worlds filled with distinct and separate stages. Yet another issue is time and assets. 2D Mario games use tile sets, so when you create multiple stages, you can use the same tile sets that are already created and arrange them in different ways for completely unique areas. Within 3D, there are 3D assets that are created, but those take more time to create and arrange. That's not to say you can't, Crash Bandicoot had 32 stages, but it certainly brings its own challenges. There are 32 stages in Super Mario Bros. 1, 90 stages in Super Mario 3, and over 70 stages in Super Mario World. Meanwhile, Mario 64 contains a mere 15 in comparison. So, Miyamoto came up with a brilliant way to account for all of this. By implementing collection into Mario 64, he could reuse the same levels and layouts for multiple challenges. Not only this, but by making each area a fully realized world, it actually limited the amount of platforming and potential frustration. While the stages have platforms and enemies you would jump on or around, they have much less area with endless pits and ways to instantly die. These do exist, but to a smaller degree. For the easier stages, you're given leeway so if you fall, you'll fall onto another part of the stage and get to try again without a death. Even in the lava stage, which instantly killed Mario in the past, in Mario 64, the lava now injured Mario, penalizing the player, but with a far less harsh penalty. Mario 64 was still a platform game, but with a new focus, and that being on collecting, and what resulted was the start of a new genre of collectathons. Fast forward, and Mario Sunshine was released towing the line between Collectathon and Platformer. Mario could now hover, thanks to Flood, which helped lighten the frustration of trying to platform in a 3D space. The focus of the game was still on collecting things, this time being Shine Sprites, but many worlds and challenges had platforming built into them as integral parts of the game. After that, Mario Galaxy was released, which similarly towed the line. Once again, Mario was set collecting things, but the structure was a little more similar to 2D Mario games, with some larger worlds in some stages, oftentimes with platforming challenges. 
And finally, we come to Mario Odyssey. Unlike the former sequels, Mario Odyssey doubles down on collecting things while simultaneously being the most lenient with platforming, to the point where it's more so an element of the world, but typically not the specific challenge of the game. Mario takes elements from Kirby, in particular being able to take enemy abilities, just with the twist of becoming them, hence why I think of this title as Murby. But the similarities don't end there. According to Kirby creator Masahiro Sakurai, Kirby was designed to be an easier game for players who weren't skilled enough to play Mario or Zelda. As such, the platform elements of Mario were there, but Kirby could now float and easily get around these in any way that player wanted, which feels similar to Mario Odyssey. Many challenges have several easy ways around them and solutions. A majority of the over 800 moons you can collect in Mario Odyssey are done by finding them through exploration, as opposed to specific platform challenges. But what makes the game great is that its platforming elements complement the exploration and are fun to do. Mario feels good, controls easily, and while the platforming you do isn't particularly challenging, on the positive side, it's also never frustrating. You can easily control your character to where you need to go, and that within itself is satisfying. To make a comparison of a poorly done collectathon, we can look at 2017's Ukulele, which was intended to be a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie. Both games are collectathons, but where Mario succeeds, Yuka fails. Ukulele has platform elements, but the controls feel slippery and therefore oftentimes unfair, especially when rolling. Another issue with Ukulele is that while platforming is the main element in the game meant to complement collecting all of the various things in the game, you're consistently sucked out of this for a minigame, and then another minigame, and then another minigame, all of which use different gameplay mechanics than what the game is supposed to be built around. Mario Odyssey, on the other hand, is completely built around his platforming abilities and ability to take enemies' powers or even collecting things. The majority of the moons are found by running around various areas using Mario's primary game mechanics of platforming and taking enemies' abilities, and even various puzzle segments, such as finding hidden art pictures, result in you exploring and using Mario's ground pound. Some moons are found by wearing the correct outfit, which you're able to purchase in-game and wear, by collecting coins within the game that you'll need to explore and platform around to find. You're consistently rewarded for using the mechanics of the game, these base mechanics are fun to do, and thus the act of collecting the rewards is almost always fun. This is how you create a well-made collectathon game. So if platforming is an element for what makes the game fun, why don't I consider it a platform game? The focal point of Mario Odyssey is entirely in collecting things, and the platforming is more of an accessory to help you collect whatever it is you're looking for and traverse through the areas, but it's very diminished in Mario Odyssey compared to previous 3D Mario titles. Mario can no longer take any fall damage, no matter how great of a height he falls from, meaning there are rarely any stakes to the platforming you'll be doing. In New Donk City, jump from the tallest skyscraper to the ground, and you'll be absolutely fine. While there are some levels with death pits, the majority of the game takes place in large worlds with no immediate consequence for being bad at platforming, meaning there's usually not a game to the platforming itself. As you collect enemy abilities, many areas which might have been platforming areas in the past no longer are. For example, in the Sand Kingdom, you'll frequently become a bullet bill in order to traverse over long pits, meaning you aren't doing any actual platforming. In the Lost Kingdom, you'll typically become a wiggler and use its ability to essentially walk across what would otherwise be a pit that would require platform skills. What platforming there is, is fun, and I absolutely adore Mario's new ability to double jump by throwing his hat and bouncing off of it, but the true platform challenges are typically relegated to being a stack of coins you can find with clever platforming. All of this said, none of it's an issue, it's simply a design choice made to enhance exploring, discovery, and collecting. You're never too stressed out about using Mario's abilities to platform, and it makes exploring the worlds more enjoyable, as you focus on trying to find and collect things, which again, is what makes Mario Odyssey such an enjoyable and well-made collectathon game. The final point I want to bring up, which helps make Mario Odyssey a great collectathon, is that it constantly rewards you with in game items. For finishing challenges, and by collecting certain items, you get new outfits for Mario to wear. While this is purely cosmetic, it does add to the enjoyment of the game. You're being rewarded for your actions by unlocking something, and even though it's cosmetic, it's a good feeling. You didn't just purchase the outfit you like, you earned that, which sometimes makes all the difference in the world. If anything, Mario Odyssey is a testament to why DLC costumes and cosmetic items is actually such a major problem. While they are purely cosmetic, they're an element that can be built into a game to enhance its enjoyment and make it more fun to play. Rather than spending $5 on this sick-ass skeleton outfit, I unlocked it and earned it, which makes me feel rewarded for unlocking it in the first place and also enjoy the outfit all that much more.
So, to conclude, Mario Odyssey is a fantastic collectathon game which utilizes some platform elements, but isn't really a platform game, and I think that some people who were disappointed by it may have been looking for more of a platformer. I'll be the first to tell you my favorite Mario games are 3 and World, as they're such well-designed platform games, but Mario Odyssey is simply different, and I think it's a well-done difference. Mario Odyssey proves that collectathon games weren't just a fad of the early 3D era, but can be incredibly fun when a competent team is at the helm. Hey guys, that wraps up a new type of video I've been wanting to make. So, because my other videos take so long, I've been wanting to make something like more of a discussion style video that I can make a lot quicker than these other videos like Super Shows and Who Mades and Lore and other such videos that I can just kind of come up with the topic I really want to talk about, discuss it, and then pop out a video. So it might not necessarily be about specific games, like the next one I want to do is probably going to be story and video games in general and just different ways to talk about story. So if these sort of discussion videos are something you like, please let me know so I know to keep on making them. And if not, that's cool, let me know that as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Later guys. Peace. So I've been editing the video all day today at this point in time of me recording. And it's up basically midnight. And I was like, oh crap, I still need to do the on-camera part. Maybe I should do that so I can finish everything before I go to bed. That's the YouTube life right there.